Inside the prison, it was a small, dark, smelly, windowless room. The room looked as if it has witnessed lots of broken souls. Shortly, the officer entered the room, where he calmly and without uttering a word or acknowledging my presence, closed the door, picked up a big right stick, and started hitting me savagely. I stood helplessly overwhelmed by the officer's outrage. The severity of the beating escalated until my skin started peeling off my body before my own eyes. I lost my feeling and any connection to my body. My confusing thoughts were trapped with no place to go. I wasn't trying to be a hero. I couldn't muster any words. I couldn't scream or resist. I couldn't understand the officer's anger and outrage. But I knew he had a free hand to do to me whatever he pleased in that room. He didn't ask about my name. He never looked me in the eyes. He never explained my crime. I was reduced to a nameless, faceless object as I stood motionless and void of any rights or expression. I wasn't the usual suspect, a communist or a government agitator. This wasn't a national security issue. The officer, unaccustomed to the slightest challenge, needed to break my will. He wanted me to beg for mercy. He needed a complete victory. My silence was deafening, and as the officer grew more infuriated, he started getting more creative in his abuse. His relentless physical torture made his early verbal profanity seem like a friendly conversation. There is nothing more humiliating than unjust physical pain. I couldn't resist or retaliate. His savage hitting destroyed my ability to express my suffering. At the time, I wish he would mix his severe beating with some verbal humiliation. After what seemed like an eternity, the beating suddenly stopped. And without saying a word, the officer stormed out of the torture room. He couldn't stay and face his unbroken victim. I found myself standing alone, licking my wounds, only to realize for the first time that the guard who brought me to the room was still there. He was standing in the corner, wiping his tears. His display of sadness brought a much needed touch of humanity to the tortured chamber. I often wondered how my brief confrontation with this officer could generate so much fury against a helpless young boy. He was not following any orders. He was the whole chain of command. I now realize we were both victims. I was a victim of unjust violence and abuse. He was a victim of his sadistic obsession with violence and his intoxication with power. I was physically paralyzed. He was morally paralyzed. There wasn't any digital camera to tell my story that day. All these years, my own memory has had to carry the entire load alone. That was the real torture.